Hey, what's going on, everybody? Steve here with Rake and Profit over at rakeandprofit.com, coming back to you with another video. And in today's video, we're going to be talking with my friend Kelly Mulligan, and we're going to be talking about how she went from being a single mom of four to building a multi million dollar business on Amazon with the power of wholesale. So I'm really excited about this show because we're going to be sharing her entire entire story of how she got started, her ups and downs, her wins and losses, and her journey of essentially starting from scratch with no experience to building a multi-million dollar business. And uh, I think it's going to be really, really exciting. So Kelly, what's going on? Welcome, welcome. Hey, Steve. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. I'm definitely excited to talk to you. I've heard a lot of great things um, about you behind the scenes. And uh, a lot of people have accredited their success to your help. And uh, I'm just excited to pick your brain because if you didn't know, I was talking a little bit uh, behind the scenes about this with you. I've actually started my wholesale uh, business on Amazon and uh, it's been a really exciting journey. So I'm excited to share a bunch of information with, with, uh, with our audience, but also selfishly interested in learning from you as well. So I'd be curious to kind of start off. What's your what's your story in terms of like how did you get started overall? Because I know you were doing some other things before wholesale. So if you don't mind just kind of going into your full story of how you learned about reselling and eventually how it led to wholesale. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I was working a full time nine to five regular job, and this was 2015. And I found out I was pregnant with my fourth child. And I knew, you know, I didn't want to go back at the 12 week mark or earlier um, full time. You know, I really wanted to take a little bit more time to take care of my kids, be home a little bit more. Um, and the job I had just wasn't able um, to offer a part time position. So I started looking um, for something I could do from home. And I also lived in a pretty rural area at the time. So there weren't a lot of local job options for me that were, would be a good fit. And I found a blog post that was actually an interview with Jessica LaRue. And so I read, read the interview and was like, huh, I think I could do that. And so I purchased her course from the Selling Family, which at the time, um, I'm sure it's grown by now, but at the time it talked about arbitrage. So retail arbitrage, online arbitrage. And so I would go to work all day, come home, take care of my family, get my kids to bed and spend about an hour each night just going through the course and doing online arbitrage because I lived 30 minutes from the nearest town and I had three kids, very young kids. So um, going, just going to the grocery store was a challenge at that point. So uh, yeah, so that is how I got started on Amazon. I did that for about a year and it was, you know, helping pay the bills, but it, it wasn't doing anything more than that really. And I, I just didn't feel fulfilled with what I was doing. And I, I knew I wanted to do something more. And about the time I was really starting to feel strongly about that, um, TWF came into my radar. I think I, you know, got an email about them and I watched the guys kind of had some videos talking about what they do, what their business model was. And I was like, wow, that's exactly what I have in mind. Um, because I'd been doing online arbitrage. So, you know, I had found a few things that were kind of replenishable through websites that would maybe they'd have a sale once a month or this or that and had had the thought of, wow, well, what if I could just buy this product from the company all the time and replenish it? But I had no idea how to get started, what that would even look like. And the TWF guys were, were this is what they did. And they had a formula for how to do this. So I took their course fall of 2016 and I got a couple, my first couple of accounts and I did wholesale as well as online arbitrage through fourth quarter. And then uh, January 2017, I quit arbitrage cold turkey, went 100% wholesale and never looked back. <laughs> Wow, that's amazing. So that's interesting. I've, I've noticed this amongst a lot of successful um, wholesale sellers. And I know there's a lot of people who are watching now who are selling on eBay, Etsy, um, Amazon FBA, selling books, doing all those types of um, product, product flips. This is a common thing I noticed. A lot of folks who are successful with wholesale have started with either retail arbitrage or online arbitrage. Now I'm curious, 
Do you feel that starting with online arbitrage, which is what you were doing, really helped you to make that transition because you had a, a strong foundation? Do you think it's not really necessary now that you know what you know with wholesale on Amazon? You know, I think it was helpful, but I also, for anybody starting out, I would recommend you go straight to wholesale, particularly with some of the changes really? that Amazon has made over the years where it really favors you to be working directly with the brand and it it doesn't favor you to be doing retail arbitrage. Interesting. So, so what are some of the downsides and upsides if you were to compare retail arbitrage and online arbitrage to wholesale. Now, obviously, obviously there's benefits, pros and cons to either, but what was one of the main reasons why I, I know you said you were, you were having success with online arbitrage, but you weren't fulfilled and maybe you weren't scaling it like you wanted to, but what are some of the other reasons and maybe even health uh, safety uh, reasons that made you want to transition and why people should look into it? Yeah. So the scalability was a huge one for me. Um, and part of how I've built my business is building relationships with brands. Um, because if you're just buying and selling, anybody can do that. So anybody can kind of come along and replace you. So I, I wanted to build something that I felt was going to be more lasting. Um, from a seller standpoint, so for example, if you send a shipment to FBA and Amazon loses your inventory, which with COVID right now, it's been happening more than I've ever <laughs> seen it happen. You you may have experienced this, Steve. I don't know if you've sent it. Yeah. Yet. Um, and if you're doing arbitrage, you do not have an invoice. You have maybe a receipt, not an invoice. So guess what? You are out of luck. You are out that money. Um, Amazon wants to see an invoice before they give you a reimbursement. So um, that alone <laughs> is a pretty big reason to just go straight to wholesale, I think. Um, and yeah, a lot of people are also complaining. I've noticed, and that's, that's a really good point. Actually, I have a, a friend of mine who's really successful with wholesale. And he's like, sometimes I'm just hoping that they lose my, they, that they lose my shipment because I just get paid. So that was interesting. Um, but one of the new things I noticed a lot of people are complaining about if they're new to selling on Amazon, you sign up for an Amazon seller central account, you go out, you start scanning products and it's restricted or it's, you know, it's category gated or it's brand gated when you sell on wholesale what what's the deal with with restrictions and whatnot yeah so you basically don't you are not limited by restrictions so when a product is restricted if you're in seller central you'll see there's this apply to sell button um says something like that right the application process it's a little bit different for different categories but it generally what it is is, is an invoice from either a wholesale distributor or a brand. So if you're doing wholesale, guess what? You have what you need to get ungated. So you are not, you're not restricted in the way you would be with arbitrage. Exactly. It's really cool. So for anyone watching right now, if you are doing RA or OA and you are restricted, they want an invoice. So when you're, you know, buying and selling wholesale, you get that invoice directly from the brand, from the manufacturer. So you just submit that and you, um, you're you good to go. If you're doing RA and OA, you're typically going to have to buy uh, typically 10 units or more of a uh, particular brand or product or category. I'm not sure. Um, but there's websites out there and then you just submit that so you can get approved. So that's definitely a, a great benefit of wholesale. Now I'm curious for the people who are watching Kelly right now, and a lot of my viewers are eBay sellers, or maybe they're just doing RA and OA um, on Amazon. Can you share a little bit of the simplified process of exactly what wholesale is? Because we all know in a sense what wholesale is. That's buying you know, a large volume or at least more than one unit and getting a discounted rate. You're getting that wholesale rate. And then that difference in price is obviously your margin. Uh, minus fees and everything. So do you mind sharing a little bit about your strategy? Because there's multiple ways that people buy and sell wholesale. And uh, I know you've gone through the wholesale formula. So you're obviously following Dan and Dylan's method. And that's what I'm going through as well right now. And they utilize a uh, process called reverse sourcing. Um, but do you mind sharing a little bit about your process and kind of like in a dumbed down version of what wholesale is and what exactly you're doing? Yes. So there, like you said, there's a couple of different ways to approach wholesale. Um, and I'm just going to speak to them real quick to kind of compare. 
So one way is to just work with distributors. You contact a distributor, you open an account, they probably carry several brands products and you just buy and sell. Um, so very similar to what you're doing, you would be doing with arbitrage. There's no direct contact with the brand or anything like that. Um, what I do is I do the reverse wholesale sourcing. So I go on Amazon and I, my personal formula is I look for brands that need my help. So I look for a product that it's got some steady sales. It's doing, doing okay. It is moving on Amazon, but it's not at its full potential. You know, it doesn't, maybe it doesn't have a great listing. Maybe there's no PPC advertising going on. Um, maybe the brand isn't brand registered, things like that. You know, they're not using a plus content. They don't have a brand storefront. So I look for a product that obviously has room for growth and is not being represented to its full potential. And then I contact that brand to open a wholesale account with them and hopefully work with them and sell their product on Amazon. Interesting. So when you find that, um, that brand or that product opportunity within a brand and you notice maybe the, uh, maybe the title isn't fully optimized, the pictures, the bullet points, uh, the keywords, and this might, for some people watching, this might be a little overwhelming, but it's really not. A lot of us intuitively can take a look at an Amazon listing and we can notice, you know, oh, that's right or that's wrong. Why does it only have two pictures? Why are there not the full, I believe, what, seven pictures I think they uh, allow? Yeah, you know, it, it varies a little bit. But, and yeah, put yourself in, just put your consumer mindset on, right? As a customer, do you immediately know what this product is? Or are you like, what does this product even do? You know, mm. and is it appealing? Maybe, you know, look at it versus one of the competitors. Which one is more appealing to you as a customer? If you look at it from that mindset, I feel like we all naturally do that. We're all naturally used to, you know, shopping and making these kinds of decisions. So, you know, if the product isn't the one you would choose, then why? And, or maybe uh, the product reviews. I love to look at product reviews and look at the bad reviews and what's going on. And are they really having a bad experience with the product or are they having a bad experience with the seller? Because that is such a big thing to be able to talk to a brand about when sellers are making their brand look bad. So what's the reason why you want to come from a place of wanting to help and add value when we live in a society where everyone's just trying to make money and why wouldn't it be easier? And I'm, I'm kind of, I, I already know the answer to this, but I'm, I'm, I'm trying to communicate this in a way of when I first started, I was thinking this and I feel like people might be thinking this as well. Why spend all this extra time to add value? Why spend all this extra time to want to help brands instead of intuitively we would think, well, let's just send as many emails and phone calls as possible to all the brands and you would think as a numbers game, we'd be able to land these accounts and we would just be able to start, you know, becoming profitable quicker. What's the reasoning behind uh, that method methodology of, of wanting to add value and find only brands that you can really help? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm so sorry. You said a word that really resonated with me um, and I messed what it Met was. Methodology? Oh. No. Um, I'm trying to think, but so basically, you know, you can contact all these brands and it's like the quick, easy way and you can grow, but what, a, and that's, you know, you're getting new accounts, new customers, but what about retention? You know? Oh. Um, so I think it's really important. I personally, I want to build something lasting. I don't want to be having to constantly, you know, send hundreds of emails a week to get new customers. I want every brand I'm working with to love working with me so much that they don't want to work with any other Amazon seller because there's millions of Amazon sellers. It's competitive. And I want my brands to love me and be like, Oh yeah, we use Kelly, our Amazon girl. So, and when they talk to their friends that are brand owners, you know, and they're talking about how things are going online, I want my, you know, my clients to say, Oh, you need to, you need to talk to Kelly. Um, because I, I personally believe that's how you build a true lasting business. That's interesting. And um, I've been learning a lot about this lately. It seems that there's, there's a couple different types of brands out there that you're going to contact. There's going to be well, one, the ones that say they're never going to work with Amazon ever. 
but you could still convince them um, to the ones that you can convince and you could become either an exclusive seller or one of maybe uh, a handful. And then there's the ones that just accept any and everybody. And I didn't realize this. And maybe you could share a little bit about how this works. But if there's, say, maybe five sellers on a listing and you're going to become the sixth, typically the way it works is the buy box, which is like that add to cart button will rotate equally. So say, for example, let's make it easy with math. Say there's nine sellers on a listing and you're going to be the 10th and there's a thousand sales per month coming in and there's ways that you can estimate sales with like jungle scout estimator and whatnot but if you're the 10th and there's a thousand typically you're going to break it up evenly so each person will get a 10 percent um share of that pie um so so the point i was going to make is if you jump on a listing and you're the 10th but they're letting a million people on and then you have people doing price wars and next thing you know there's 15 and 20 and 30 your, your piece of the cake, which was 100 sales, because again, the buy box is rotating equally. Again, that's just a share of your sales. It's going to become less and less and less. Am I on the right track with that thinking? Yes, absolutely. Um, it's going to become less and the price wars, um, those are a real problem. So that's, that's why I focus on really building a relationship with the brand, helping them understand the benefits of not just selling to anybody that's going to sell on Amazon. Because when a price war happens, for example, that degrades the value of their product, right? The price is just lower and lower and lower. And any of you that, you know, shop for things, you probably compare, you do price comparison, right? What is it in the store? What is it on Amazon? What is it on another website? So if somebody's in a store and they're looking at a product and maybe they, they pick up amp, they pick up their phone and look at Amazon, they're like looking at and they see, oh, wow, it's $15 on Amazon, but it's 20 or $25 in, in the store, they're going to buy it on Amazon. And that hurts that brand's brick and mortar relationships. It hurts their overall business. It's, you know, this compounding effect. So that's why it's really important for brands to not just sell to any seller. And that's something that as you build a relationship, you can educate them about. Interesting. That's really, really insightful. So I know inside of the wholesale form of the community, they do have a, uh, they have coaches and whatnot that it's not open to the public, but if you do join the program, it's, it's not even open right now. So we're not pitching it, but, um, if down the road, if you ever do join or whatnot, there are coaches, I know you're a coach inside of that, uh, program. And I'm kind of curious to ask you, because I know you work with a lot of people who are new and even obviously people who are six figures plus, what would you say is the biggest limiting belief that people have when they're starting a wholesale business? Because I can tell you mine right now. Mine is like, I don't like, I, I don't know what I'm going to say on the phone. Like that's like, that's my number one thing is like, I'm going to have to pick up the phone and talk. And even though I have knowledge, like I've been selling on Amazon for five years, you know, I don't have firsthand experience optimizing listings, even though I understand titles and pictures, you know, I've never run PPC campaigns and different things like that. So I know it's kind of like a twofold question in a sense, but would you say are the biggest limiting beliefs that people have? And then maybe after that, we can jump into like phone call confidence 101. Absolutely. So I think that what you just said is the biggest limiting belief for a lot of people starting this. That's what I've seen. And I experienced it myself when I was getting started, you know, um, having the mindset of I need to know everything before I really take action and build this business. That's the exact wrong mindset. You need to take action and focus on, you know, in the beginning of, a, of your wholesale business, you need to focus on sourcing products and contacting companies and getting accounts. That's That should be, you know, 90, 95% of your time. Then when you get an account, okay, now maybe we're gonna learn how to do listing optimization. Okay, cool. Now maybe we're gonna learn how to do PPC and you, you keep your focus you know, that laser focus on the most important thing at the time. And really just, you need to have confidence in your ability to problem solve and just figure it out. The information's out there, you know, TWF has a lot of great resources and there's resources on selling on Amazon and doing all the technical things all over the internet. So as long as you are confident, you're gonna, you know, work hard and figure it out, you can be successful. Yeah. And a lot of times one of the, the number one 
uh, things that I feel like I've grown with in my business and whatnot is learning how to ask for help so many times. And who could, who could relate right now in the comments or even yourself, Kelly, how many times have we, you know, started a new business or maybe it was a workout routine or a nutrition plan or something. And we feel like we need to come up, we have to solve every single problem on our own. We have to figure everything else. We have to figure everything out on our own. And the truth is, I mean, in 2020 now, there's so many free and even paid ways to be extremely resourceful from YouTube channels, free YouTube channels to Facebook groups, to, you know, coaching programs, to courses. I mean, me personally, I've got a coach. I'm going through TWF right now because for me, you know, the time and the, it's just, I don't, I have very limited time. So I, I really want to pay to play and learn from the best. Um, but learn to invest in yourself. What advice would you give to people? Because I mean, Kelly, you're an example. You invested in uh, Jessica LaRue's online arbitrage course. I've never taken that, but I've heard great things about it. Anyone looking to learn about, you know, OA and stuff, check out her program. Um, and then you obviously invested in, in TWF as well, which isn't, you know, a cheap program, right? So no. what's the mindset that you had to be able to invest in something? Like what's your thought process behind it? Because there's a lot of people who just think coaches are scams and courses are scams and YouTube videos are just and they, they don't invest in themselves. Yeah, so let me try to cover a few things that you said in this. So one, when I took TWF, um, it was a major investment for me at the time financially. And so I went into it with the mindset of, I have to win it. There is no other option. I have to, I can't just like this amount of money, I can't just let it go to waste. And yeah. so, you know, when people take course after course after course, and they're like, oh, it's a scam. Well, are you actually putting in the work? Are you actually committing yourself? Because if you are, you're, you probably don't need to take, you know, 20 different courses, pick one and execute, take action and excel at that. You know, don't, don't take 20 different courses. Um, so that, that would be one piece of advice. Um, and then in general, I, something I like to talk to people about, especially I came from a place where money was very tight when I started my journey. Um, and so what, what you can, you can use that to your advantage, right? That doesn't have to be a limiting belief because a lot of people are like, well, I don't have enough money. Well, are you resourceful? Because resourcefulness, in my opinion, is more important than resources. And so you can really just embrace that and not, you know, don't give yourself that pop out of, oh, well, I don't have enough money, so I can't be successful. That's completely false. Yeah, one of the questions I ask myself is, and uh, this is an example, it doesn't relate to money, it's uh, salsa. I've been learning how to dance salsa lately. And, uh, you know, I was watching free YouTube videos and I was dancing on my own and even my roommate dances, but he's not a coach. and. Uh, you know, I asked myself, how many amazing experiences am I missing out on by not investing in a salsa coach? And once I invested in a salsa coach, I mean, my results went through the roof. I learned so much quicker. I built so much more confidence up. Matter of fact, at six o'clock, I have a girl come over to teach me some lessons today. So, I mean, sometimes you have to ask yourself, you know, you say, I don't have the money to invest. And, and we're not talking only about TWF. This is anything, anything. There's other programs you could look at as well. But ask yourself, how much money am I losing out on by not investing in this? Right. So it's just something to think about just in general. Um, let's take a couple steps back. I'm, I'm interested to hear a little bit more about when you landed your first wholesale account, because this is what gets me fired up. I'm uh, I know I'm going to be landing my first accounts very soon. I'm, I'm getting to that process of, you know, I've got all my I've got about 60 leads right now, company phone numbers, emails, everything's all ready to go. And now it's time to jump into the phone calls. And I'm not going to lie, I may have been procrastinating the last couple of days, but don't tell anyone that'll be our little secret. But I'm going to be landing my first accounts very soon. And, and folks who are watching, they might be getting close as well. That's exciting. First account. Let's talk about your first couple accounts and kind of how, how you went through that. And um, I'm just curious to hear your story about that. Yeah, absolutely. So prepping for this, you know, I read that question and thought it was funny because I literally cannot tell you who my first account was. <laughs> I, I feel like I should be able to, right? I should remember that, but I don't. Um, and I know the first few accounts I landed, you know, I literally just sent an email to the company. You know, I, I had found a list of products I was interested in carrying. 
looked up the company's contact information. I literally just Googled, found their website, you know, and shot them an email. Hey, I'd like to open a wholesale account. Uh, you know, how do, how do I do that? Right. Something super simple, very simple, like one, two line email. And that's how I opened my first few accounts was just getting a response to that. Um, but what I did want to share is I have a couple of more interesting stories of other accounts that I opened, you know, in my first year or so along the way. So one of the ones I thought was most interesting was um, probably about six months in, you know, just one of my emails I was sending out probably about 50 emails a week to different brands. And so one of my emails went out to this brand and it happened. It was a, somewhat larger company, not a mom and pop company, right? And happened to get to the right person in the sales department and they were like, huh? And so reached back out to me, we started talking and I started talking to them about what they had going on on Amazon and what their goals were and things. And we really built a connection and, you know, sat down and really kind of dug into some of the details of, okay, here's, what your products look like. Here's your number one competitor. And they're, they're just really kicking your butt. Right. Um, so anyhow, unfortunately at the time they weren't able to commit to working with me. So what I did is about every six to eight weeks, um, I would check back in with that contact. Cause he was like, keep checking back in with me. Right. We want to work with you, but it just wasn't the right time. Um, so 13 months later, <laughs> of checking in, you know, once a month, once every other month. And, you know, I, I would help my contact give him some information that he could take to his bosses, make him look good, help them understand more of the numbers and things of their situation on Amazon. Um, and then finally I, you know, we had one of our like monthly check-ins and I was like, huh, they're just, they're really not getting this. So what am I, how am I not communicating this? How can I communicate this in a different way that they're going to understand? Because that's, that's a big thing that I believe is if somebody doesn't understand why they should work with me, then I'm not doing a, the best job of communicating. So how can I do it better? Right? So I completely pivoted and instead of sending like an email or a PowerPoint or whatever, I did a really quick video. Um, and I just, shared my screen and I spoke from a place as I'm a mom and I have kids and I'm looking at buying this kind of product and here's your competitor. Okay, great. Like this is all the reasons they look great. And I would absolutely buy this product. Now here's your listing. It doesn't have critical information. I need to make my decision. There's this issue, that issue, all this stuff. Um, so I, I can't even buy this because you know, I have no confidence. It doesn't tell me what I need to know about it. And I don't know if it's going to be safe for my kids. And so I, I sent them that video and apparently it went viral around the office. And a month later we closed the deal. <laughs> so that is awesome. That's resourcefulness. That's creativity. That's thinking outside of the box. And when you were saying that, you know, cause I make YouTube videos all the time and I love making videos. Like I'm used to that outside of like sending emails and and in a phone call. So I'm like, that's a really good idea. That's a great tip for anybody. If you find a brand you want to work with, maybe just do a quick screen share, say, Hey, what's up? I'm Steve. Uh, I was looking at your Amazon listing and I noticed that your competitors were doing this, blah, 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 blah. Hey, here's a couple tips for you to uh, increase your sales and conversions. And uh, Hey, if you'd like to jump on a call, I mean, you're just adding value at first. I mean, I don't know if that's the best approach, but I love what you said there. Well, thanks. Yeah. It, uh, <laughs> it happened to work out with that one. So um, yeah, I think it's that's, just that's cool. fine tuning how you communicate with people. So for the folks who are watching right now, who may, may, may or may not even fully understand why wholesale is so powerful. Um, why are you spending so much time? I mean, 13 months working with this company to land this deal. Now you don't have to give me specific numbers and details of this, but what could a profitable wholesale account mean to somebody? Maybe you could share, um, you know, experiences or results from maybe your accounts or somebody else, or just give figurative numbers. But for example, like when you go out to a thrift store, you might find an amazing product that you could sell for $200 profit, but then you only have one and it's gone. 
what's the real power? Why are you spending so much time investing in building these, these relationships? What can these mean to somebody financially? If you kind of get my drift. Oh, absolutely. So, you know, the right wholesale account can be a full-time income for somebody easily. So that's the benefit. And, you know, this account that took me 13 months to get had that potential. Had it not had that potential, you know, I, I probably would not have pursued it in the same way. So, you know, you do have to weigh what what is worth your time. And they were interested and I was interested um, and there was a big potential. But yeah, one wholesale account can can be a full time income. Now, I'm curious, what specifically are you looking at? that would point to the fact that this could be a big opportunity. Um, and I'm going to be doing some more videos for folks who are watching. Like I want to learn how to go sourcing. I want to learn what criteria to look for. I'm actually going to be doing some videos. We have a lot of interviews coming and we're going to have Dan and Dylan. I've got some friends of mine who are very successful. I'm going to actually just share my screen one of these days and show you how I'm doing it. But, um, what are you really looking at Kelly to be like, wow, this is a big fish. This could be something worthwhile where, you know, if I find 10 or 20 companies like this and I just stay in contact with them over a couple of years, if I just land 5% of them, this could be a game changer. So what are you, what are you looking at and what can others look at as well? Yeah. So you can look at the sales and the monthly revenue, the current sales and monthly revenue of a product. And then you can also look at, okay, well, how many products does this brand have? Because maybe one of their products is doing $5,000 a month in sale. But if they have 10 products like that, now you're looking at an account that's 50,000 a month in sales, right? So that's, does that kind of answer your yeah, question? No, no, for sure. That That's what I thought you were getting at. How important is it to look at the number of sellers? So say we're looking at you know, X, Y, Z brand. And we notice that they have, you know, maybe a line of 15 products. And, uh, I mean, I'll just, I'll give a hint, you know, let's just say that the products, um, are all selling for maybe $20 or more. Amazon's not on the listing. Um, maybe the products are already selling pretty well. Are you, how concerned are you with, with the number of sellers or are you less concerned with the number of sellers that are on each product? Because again, to not overcomplicate things, the way that we're able to estimate how much money we're going to make from each uh, product, if we're able to sell it, is how many sellers divided by, you know, how many competitive sellers, right? And we'll talk about that in another video, but there's a difference between a seller and a competitive seller. Um, but again, you divvy it up and you can kind of estimate based on how many sellers and sales, how much you can make. Um, are you concerned with the number of sellers? So I actually take the pro approach of if I'm on the fence, just contact them. You know, um, I don't try to find the perfect me. I'm, I have a few criteria very similar to what you mentioned. And then if it meets those criteria, let's contact them and go from there. Because ultimately my goal at the end of the day is to be the only Amazon seller that they want to work with. And so if I know that they need help, I know I can bring value. I don't care if there's 20 sellers, because if we can make that connection and I'm going to be the only seller, then that's not even going to be an issue. Right? So that that's my personal goal. That's not everybody's approach. Um, but I'm not, I, I'm not intimidated by that. And I don't try to narrow down my needs that much. I want to see who I can connect with. Gotcha. Can you hear me? Okay. Okay, cool. I yeah. think you're back. Um, I could already hear people thinking in their mind right now. Well, why would the brands want to sell to other people? And I had this limiting belief before when they could just sell it themselves. And I believe this is something we should talk about because once you understand what brands, I don't know if I'm saying meant to do, like once you, once you learn what their true objective is, then you kind of get a better understanding. So why do, why do brands even want to work with Amazon sellers in general? Why do they even sell to Amazon sellers when they could just list the items up themselves? Yeah, absolutely. So Amazon is kind of a pain to deal with. If, if you don't know that yet, when you get started, you're going to figure it out. Um, but that is why someone like me and all the other sellers out there have a business. So brands, you know, they want to do what they're good at, which is, growing their brand, growing their product and their business. Most of them, they don't have time to have, you know, somebody in their business 
learn Amazon and learn how it works. It's this whole own thing. And there's a lot to learn and there's a lot that changes continuously. So that's why somebody like me or you is so beneficial because we're the Amazon expert. We can just handle it for them and help them grow their business without them having to invest that time or money themselves. Awesome. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad you shared that because that was one of the things that really held me back before, you know, one of the things that really attracted me to the wholesale model is, and let me know if, if you agree with this or not. It seems like it's really fulfilling because you're not just going out to a thrift store and I'm not saying going out to a thrift store isn't fulfilling, but when you go out to a thrift store, you're just, you're kind of like just treasure hunting and whatnot. That's the fun in it, but you're not really making a huge impact in people's lives. I mean, I guess in a sense you are bringing these, you're turning the trash to, to gold, you're cleaning things, making it a little nicer, bringing it to the market. But with wholesale, especially your approach, it seems like it's fulfilling because you really are adding value. You're helping these brands grow. You're helping to improve um, their conversions. You're helping to get their their listings cleaned up so more and more people can see it and enjoy the experience. Do you find this this business model not only financially rewarding but also you know fulfilling from a sense of purpose? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think it's incredible to be able to help other small businesses grow and, you know, change their lives and their families' lives. So that's cool. Really like that part of this business. Speaking of family, how in the world you have you have four children, right? Yeah, I have four kids. How in the world are you managing? You know, I'm having a hard time just managing myself right now. Having four children and running, you know, a seven figure wholesale business plus you're you know you're helping brands manage um you're doing brand management which is something we could talk about um maybe later on but um how are you how are you managing your business and your personal life and your coaching i mean you're you're like the uh you're the tony robbins of wholesale thanks <laughs> um i just joke jokingly say one day at a time um but no i you know like I do with my business. I have systems and processes and, you know, kind of schedule my time, right? Um, and I do the same thing, you know, in my personal life as well. I try to have a schedule, a routine, um, do things that are going to, you know, save me time. And then I'm really big on trying to focus on, okay, when it's work time, it's work time. And then when it's family time, it's family time. The phone gets put away, the computer's turned off. And I want to give a hundred percent of my attention to my kids, you know, when it's our time together. So. Awesome. That's really inspiring as well. I know there's a lot of, you know, uh, single moms and stay at home moms and just folks who are watching, um, you know, with families. And a lot of times I hear just in the comments of YouTube, you know, Steve, I would love to start, you know, selling on eBay or Steve, I would love to sell on Amazon. I just don't have the time. So it's really valuable to hear, um, how much weight you put on making sure to really manage your time and priorities, your prioritize your time and really make sure when you're doing something that you're fully immersed in it, whether that's spending time with your kids or your business. So that's really valuable. Now um, we're, we're coming towards the, the end of this, uh, this fun little chit chat right now. And I got a couple more questions for you. And uh, one of the questions that I had, and I like to always ask my guests this is if you could go back in time, knowing what you now know about wholesale and you could bring yourself back in time to when you first got started, you know, Kelly, she didn't know what she was doing. She was just going through the course. What advice would you give yourself? Yeah, absolutely. So first of all, I would have just started with wholesale. <laughs> was on. That would have saved me a little bit of time. Um, but also outsourcing things sooner, hiring a virtual assistant sooner, those kinds of things. I'm a, I'm the kind of person that leans towards doing it myself. Like just, okay, I'll just figure it out and do it. And that's, I think a good quality, but it's also important to learn how to then hand that off and teach that to somebody else so that you can move on to the next thing that you need to learn how to do. So I would have outsourced sooner and I actually had my own warehouse for a while and I now use prep centers and I would have absolutely just gone to a prep center immediately. So. Interesting. 
you know, I actually, uh, I forgot to put this on my notes, but I wanted to ask you about that because I'm going to be utilizing a prep center because I'm here in Miami. You guys might be able to, I'm on the, literally the 48th floor. I mean, I don't think it would be a good idea bringing up pallets up here. Um, so I wanted to utilize a prep center. How challenging is that for, for someone who's new to wholesale utilizing prep centers versus um, the traditional way of obviously getting inventory sent to yourself, inspecting it, and then shipping it off to, to, to FBA? Yeah, so it's actually way easier. <laughs> you don't have really? to inventory. Um, most prep centers are pretty similar. They're pretty similarly priced. What I encourage people to do is contact a few, ask questions, see who you can communicate with. Because what I'm concerned with, with in looking for a prep center is, okay, are they gonna take care of my products and package them correctly? And can I communicate with them if something goes wrong, something gets weird? with shipping or whatever, you know, maybe some product shows up damaged. I want really good communication. So, um, and then the way it looks like if you're going to place your wholesale order is you place your order with a brand, you have them ship it to the prep center's address. The prep center will have a process. A lot of them use some kind of software where you will go into your seller account and you'll actually create the shipment that's going to go to Amazon and you'll tell them, okay, I'm sending, 100 units of product A and 50 of product B, whatever. Then your prep center takes it from there and closes out the shipment and sends it to Amazon. That's generally, in a nutshell, how it works. So find somebody that you can communicate with, and then they will tell you their process. That's so cool. Yeah. So literally with this business model, you have the option of touching the products if you don't want to trust another company, um, and it might be able to save you a little bit of money, but it's going to sacrifice your time. Or if you want to run this business remotely um, from the 48th floor or wherever you're living right now, or maybe you're, uh, I don't know, maybe you're out in the, the Philippines hanging out, having fun out there, or you're in Hawaii, um, you could run this business remotely, which is really exciting. Um, now, I'm curious, what advice would you give to somebody, Kelly, who they're interested in this content, they've been reselling before, which is a, you know, definitely give you a big advantage if you understand reselling and the Amazon platform. They're watching this. They're, they're interested. They're like, this is cool. This is scalable. This is something I could do, but they're just like, and I've dealt with this before. I just don't know if I'm smart enough to do this. I don't know if I have what it takes to, to jump on phone calls. I don't know if, what it's, if, you know, I'm used to just going to, to thrift stores and buying stuff. I don't know how to problem solve and help brands. Like I have to talk to professional brands. Like this just seems too much. I've thought that. What what would you say? Because I'm sure a lot of people d deal with this. Yeah. And I mean, I've had the same thoughts and I like to tell people. So I used to get so nervous about phone calls. I'm not an extrovert. I'm naturally an introvert. I'm nervous right now about being on a video call. <laughs> You're killing it though. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but I used to get so nervous talk like calling brands on the phone, I would literally start shaking, just shaking before the phone call and have to be like, okay, take a deep breath, calm down. Um, so what I would say is one, you're just talking to people. The person on the other side of the line is a person. They're a person. Just think of it like that. You know, um, don't get wrapped up in, oh, this is, you know, this multi hundred million dollar brand, whatever. Don't think about that. You're talking to a human. You're talking to a person. Um, and then you don't have to know everything. So what? when I got a phone call, I'm not trying to be an expert to the brand. I am. All I'm trying to do on my first phone call is talk to them and ask them questions and ask them what they have going on on Amazon. You know, what, what are they struggling with? What are their goals? any kind of question, just engage in a conversation. I don't want to be even problem solving on the phone call at that point. I just want to ask questions and learn about their business. So I don't know. If so you don't want that, you don't want that first phone call to be, Hey, what's up? I'm Steve. Can I open up a wholesale account with you? No, that's, that's a great way to start it. I'm just saying I don't lead in with, Hey, I'm, I'm Kelly. Can I open up a wholesale account? And by the way, I'm going to fix this, this, and this for you because that approach really turns people off. Interesting. Kelly, last question is where do you want to take this business of yours, this wholesale business? Um, 
are you looking to continue to just keep this as like a, you know, a multi-million dollar lifestyle business? Or are you looking to grow this thing into having 50 employees or, um, you know, what's, what's your goal? What do you, what do you want? Yeah. So something about me, I guess, is I really enjoy working. I like the work I do. I don't want to just sit back and not work and get a paycheck. Like that's not my idea of a happy life. Um, so I definitely want to keep doing more of what I'm doing, keep growing my business. Um, I'm currently reading the 10 X rule. So I absolutely want to 10 X my business. Um, and I know we didn't really get a chance to talk about it today, but I've gotten into a lot of brand management over the past year to two years. And so basically for anybody listening, what that is, is it's very similar to the way I run my wholesale business where I'm helping the brand, but instead of buying products from the brand, I'm just managing a seller account that belongs to the brand owner. And so I'm not actually buying inventory, I'm just handling Amazon for them um, and then being paid as a contractor. Wow. That's a really exciting opportunity for anybody who gets in this. Once you master this skill and you learn how to help brands and you're, you know, learning from the selling end, that's a whole nother market that I'm, is that a very competitive, is that a lot less competitive you would say right now versus just traditional wholesale? Um, I think it's something that people are starting to realize is a really good way to go. And part of that is what Amazon has done. So Amazon's always making changes. They're always coming out with new things on the platform, new tools, new programs, beta testing, this or that. And so over the past couple of years, they've really started to shift to where if you are a brand owner, you can get access to a lot of programs that a wholesaler can't get access to. So the best way for me to help a brand is to do brand management and have them set up that seller central account and hire me to run the entire Amazon portion of their business. That's so exciting. That's really, really cool. Well, Kelly, you dropped a lot of knowledge bombs. And if I wouldn't have known better, I would have thought you were a YouTuber yourself because you came on here and you brought the fire. So, um, I know you're not super active on social media. Every time I do these interviews, people, a lot of times I just interview people who are just running these businesses and they're not running, you know, social media, you know, platforms and whatnot. But um, I know you're very active in the TWF uh, alumni group. So if anybody is a part of that group, definitely reach out to her there. Um, is there anywhere else that you're active or just mostly in the, in the Facebook group? Um, I mean, I don't mind if people want to send me like a message through Facebook Messenger or something like that. I'm around. Um, if I don't get back to you for a couple of days, <laughs> I have four kids and a business, but I try, I do try to get back to everybody that reaches out. Um, and yeah, I'm just, I kind of have my head down <laughs> focused on all my stuff right now, but I'm happy to talk if anyone has questions. Kelly, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Really appreciate you coming on and uh, sharing this information. And if it just helps a couple people, I hope people take action on this, whether it's a, a course or a coach or free YouTube videos, or just trying it out for yourself. Definitely look into this opportunity, um, especially with all the things going on with Amazon and the changes. RA, OA, it's going to become much more challenging over time. And if you're looking to continue reselling on Amazon, wholesale is a great opportunity. So definitely look into it, do some research. But Kelly, thank you so much. And uh, with that being said, have an amazing day. And everybody, I appreciate you.